Hi, and welcome to VFX Tutors. I'm Josh, and in this tutorial, we're gonna be continuing with our sword manual track. So far, we've done our first initial key poses. Then in our, then in the next one, we did um, the in-between key poses to sort of get better refinement. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go through and we're gonna refine the whole sword track, and we're gonna try and get it as tight as possible. So I've just opened up my uh, last file. So hopefully you've been following along and we can um, continue on from this. So I'm just going to start from my first frame. And I'm going to work backwards again because it's just the simplest. So with most of this, it's going to be the same as before. I'm just going to use my 2D pad to sort of. I'm just going to check my keyframes. And I've done them, done, done them, I've checked them quite a few times going through each of the ones. So I'm going to then, before adding loads of keyframes, I'm going to do some more in betweens. And I'm going to hope that my in betweens catch most of the slips. So ideally, that's what you want to do. You want to be letting your sort of in betweens of your animation to sort of get most of the animation but in reality that's probably not going to happen so we might have to adjust it It's looking pretty good. I'm just going to go through and do as many in betweens as possible. And hopefully, at this point, we should only have to do very minor adjustments. So, let's actually get the orientation of this correct. We're just checking every single frame. There's probably going to be some jitters in this at this point, but we can, we can worry about that once we've got it. Because we kind of want to get this as tight as possible. With just using in-betweens. And probably at this point, I'm more focused about getting this absolutely perfect. Because I think we're going to have to do a lot of manual keyframing for sure in this. And I'll show you, even once we've gone through this sort of third phase of refinement, we'll see, we'll, we'll sort of set it, we'll set up our image plane so it sort of reveals all the movement. And you can see even here, it's pretty good. Like, I feel that our in betweens are working really well here. And sometimes, like, that's now just saved us quite a large amount of work. One. 
maybe even that's a slightly incorrect lineup on that point. As you can see, it's very hard to even really tell. Where it could be slipping. But our in-betweens are working very well here. Apart from that last frame, these last couple frames. Actually, a little drift there. Let's just check that's not on. Tiniest little drift here. You can see on the the sort of hill, it slides down. Even here, probably. It's not, when, when looking at it closer, it does need some sort of adjustment, for sure. But this is so tiny amounts. Proper comes off there. That's a. Uh... Oh no, that's just. It just froze, I think. So. That's looking pretty good, just like even up through there. I'm sure it needs some refinement. But at this point, we um we can do it this, especially with swords. There's a, there's a much easier way to sort of be able to see. First of all, we want to try and get the best we can with what we can we've got. So I'm actually quite happy with that first bit. So now let's go through past here. So let's. I'm hoping that it's the same as everything else, just very small adjustments. So some of these movements we're not really going to get just by moving it. We will have to go to our graph editor. Because there's just no way we can really sort of move it around that such small values.
where we start needing adding a lot more frames. We also want to be making sure that our perspective's not doing it. And I think crazy. Because we checked this in our previous ones, so. Because it's not doing any big jumps or pops or anything, so. And our sort of main goal for this is get this. 90% of the way there. And then um, we'll do our absolute final sort of refinement. Which will change how we sort of will change what we see in our image plane that will make a little sort of trick to make it a lot easier to see what's going on so I think we can really see how wobbly this blade is in every sort of frame and unfortunately this is pretty much what it's like when you've got an object track that you can't well I imagine if you spent a long time in 3D 2D tracking all of this you might get something from it but it will be so it, it won't be worth it you'll have to fix so much of it um, it's hardly worth the time in the 2D tracking whereas you could be Pretty much getting it right first time this way. And to me, this is actually easier. So if we look for our animation, it's starting to actually look really nice. We've done over, we've just done about half of it, but we've still got one more phase of probably refinement to do after this, but hopefully we shouldn't have to do too much. But, um, dependent on how thorough you are with your sort of lineup points, you may have more stuff to do. Um, that's why I always try and get it. Always focus on your key poses. I know I say it all the time, but I can't reiterate enough how much that's going to help you. But also, just like if you're doing some VFX like this, don't get in the correct sort of onset data. It's really valuable because it could save you days of work. And I hope if you are, uh, there should be enough information on my channel that kind of helps you to get all that sort of information. Um, I could probably do a bespoke data acquisition sort of thing, but I think I've covered it in most of my photogrammetry stuff. But um, And there's, there's, I've got so many more tutorials that I need to do as well. We seem to be doing, and I've done a ton of match move, but hopefully this is the first. I want to kind of break out of just doing match move and getting people doing more, more CG sort of stuff, modeling, texturing, stuff like that. But I find if we've also got all this sort of stuff, it kind of gives you 
really good sort of grounding for what it's going to take time and what's going to be easy or difficult in your VFX shots because a lot of people don't factor in this sort of, sort of stuff and when they plan their sort of VFX personal projects they realise that they have to do stuff like this then they're like oh it's actually quite a lot of work but if you follow the sort of steps that I do in all my shots it's actually not not too bad and most of these sort of hard shots are actually very dependent on good onset data. And here you see here uh, the in betweens working. Really well. Got these bolts lining up really nice. Just slightly tilt that so it's in the center of the blur. And I'm adding a lot of keyframes here. Which we could, if you're not careful, you could be actually making it worse. So you've got to be really careful with the amount of keyframes that you do add. Once we've gone through this and got this as best as we can with what we can see right now, we'll change our image plane and we'll sort of prep the whole sort of shot for the final sort of refinement phase. Let's actually to it back like that. So we've actually just done quite a big change here, so we have to be careful with doing a big change. Because we might have sort of undo that. I just wanted to get these bolts in really nicely. So, most of it is just very small adjustments, luckily. doing a lot of this just in because I kind of trust my my keyframes I'm doing a lot of this in the sort of camera view now you can see we've got something really really nice working at the moment having stuff like this on your showroom is is really valuable as well because as you, the amount of times that I see people in, in like show reels and you're like people are object tracking things with ping pong balls and you're like 
yeah, they've done a, a really good job, but that's just not, not realistic. It never happens. So, um, and you get all this for free as well. So, well, if you've been following it through, if you've um, been following this entire sort of series of the sword and the purge guy, you should have you should be able to build the sword from all of that because all the images are free at the start. But if uh, on my pa Patreon page, like I give all the sort of my sort of pre-built geo as well, so you can sort of skip some of the tutorials if you've already done it. So it's looking really good at the moment. And a lot of this is lining up really quite good. We often only do really small amounts of adjustments. So we know that's we want to keep it the right length, but I've probably said it like a million times now that like the sword does wobble a little bit, so just be wary of that. You may not get it fitting absolutely amazing every time. It's looking pretty good. Right, we're almost done through this stage. Well, I say that actually, we're only just over halfway through. <laughs> and we all come to the worst part as well. But I hope you guys have been enjoying these tutorials. And, uh, yeah. You're making good use of them. Because this is all the sort of stuff that I look for in showreels and stuff when we're looking to hire match movers. Some of this manual stuff is 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 really valuable it's like the the two main things that we look for is just surveying to geo because that kind of tells me if you can survey to the geo it tells me that you can 2d track well and you can problem solve quite well because and the fact that you can survey to geo is, is just what we always do anyway so it's hard to always go off if someone's just tracked something and modeled it afterwards because you don't really know what they've done. The amount of times that I've seen a... Uh, it may look right in the camera where you've modelled it, but it may not work logically between shots. So that's why it's always important to sort of survey to a geometry. And it also just gives you a massive advantage over other people applying for jobs. If you can show them you can do that. It should be pretty safe. So you probably can't get, get all these tiny, tiny little movements. So we will probably need... In the next sort of the final refinement, we'll probably go through using the curve editor. Even looking at this, like the hilt is working extremely well. We've just got some wobble on the blade.
tiny little wobble there, but I think it's so small. We'll have to do that in the curve editor. Just super fine adjustments. We actually did some tweens here earlier in the previous tutorial, so it's actually already looking pretty good. We just need to go through it, get them all nice, nice and tight. We're actually almost, almost done. So it'll be interesting to see once once we've done this and we've done this as tight as we can with as much as we can sort of see. It's quite motion blurry there, but I'm just focusing on this and that bit there. It'd be good to see what this looks like when we do a just a small play blast to sort of see how it looks. Okay, let's just select our camera. Let's just change our clipping plane. It's probably Yeah, it's a little bit, it's not flickering now, so. Same, slightly wrong here. This is the rotation that's off. Let's just check the previous ones because it might. It might need changing for all of them. I think it does. where it starts to get very blurry so we have to try and do our best to sort of keep it logical Just try and always keep it to the center of the, if you can't really see, just always try and keep it to the center of the blur. So we're actually really close to sort of almost finishing this. Like at a point where it's worth play blasting it.
luckily. Like, you may be getting different results. It's all really dependent on how tight your initial key poses are. Always make sure that they're as best as I can do, of keeping them as tight to the geometry as possible. That helps massively of getting a decent lineup. So it can be quite tricky, but with practice you'll be able to do these really quick. once all this is done and the series is complete you'll be good to see like your sort of creations that you make from it where is the blur even on that so that's in a completely wrong place there close that's completely wrong that frame I don't know what's happened there but it's more like that move that like a crazy amount I'm gonna delete that key and let it tween again because we because can't really see as I said on the previous ones that we might actually have to uh do this complete last set frame by frame because we can't really tell exactly where it is. But we can just keep the animation going from its last sort of known position, sort of, so to say. And just do the best with what we can really see. Can't really see much of that blade anymore, apart from it's about there. So I'm feeling that it's probably throwing it all off because that probably keyframe's wrong. But we'll keep it there for now. Very little to go on here now. Part of 
off. I'm just trying to keep it as logical as possible. So all we can do is sort of keep it in that blur whilst checking our perspective. It's a very fast movement, so if we just look down. So if we look at the actual sword movement in this view, because it's coming forward very fast. I don't feel that should slide. I want to say we'd keep it logical. I don't think that should come back. I think that should still be following the arc of the movement. So it seems to be pulling back. It can be quite tricky. Sort of see it, maybe a shape, the sort of sword shape there. So if we look at sword perspective here, just press Q to hide it with the manipulator. See how it's, it's like it's definitely following the curve of being swung. So quite happy with that. That seems to be working quite well. So let's just scrub through our timeline slowly and just see if we can spot any big big things that we've missed. Obviously, until we really play blast it, we really not, might not be able to tell, but we kind of want to get it as best as we can before play blasting. Otherwise, if you play blast way too soon, it just looks bad, and you're like, oh, I've got so many things to fix. So let's try and keep the fixes down to a minimum for now so we can see a tiny little pop here in the tip it's very hard to see but just a tiny little rotation up Just a 
extremely small pops. Scrubbing through it. Timeline, just looking at the entire sword. Looking at possible places where it's popping and looking a bit odd, so it's definitely popping there. Go for it. Pick any points that I can sort of see that need improving. This is where you might need to get to the graph editor. But we'll do that after we've done a sort of play blast. at all I don't know I'm just not too convinced that that's the correct position I feel like probably I can sort of see the hilt there How far is that current search? Probably I think I have Yeah, it's very difficult to tell where that as actually is. I think we'll only really find out until we play blast it and see if it looks normal or not. So I'm fully expecting that frame to look a bit weird. Delete that. That's all. I'm going to select that keyframe and just delete. Let's see where the tween gets me. I 
That's definitely like there. It is really difficult to tell when it's this blurry. I think I might have got a bit confused with the shadow as well. Okay, so that looks a little bit more normal. So, I'm now going to save this and we're going to go through and play blast it and see what we can see. Cool. So, once you've done that, let's we can close that window. We don't particularly need it. Let's go to panels. I've got our purge guy. And let's put this in a group. So, I'm just selecting the prop sword group. I'm just going to make a new layer. Let's go sword layer I'm just going to change it see what it looks like bright green oh, I'm just going to show uh, nerves curves off and why can't I never find locators? Cool, so now we've just got our geo and our wireframe. There's definitely going to be some pops and bumps in there, but what we'll do is just, we'll just go to our uh, render settings and I'm just going to do it at the full res of the plate so it's just going to be easier on HD. So I'm just going to right click on my timeline. I'm going to click on this little, in fact, I'm going to turn my auto key off so I don't accidentally start keying stuff. I'm going to right click on my timeline, select the box next to play blast. And I'm going to display size from render settings. Um, I'm just going to have it as JPEGs to keep them as low as possible. I'm not, I'm, we're not going to save this play blast unless you want to, then you can just Select saved file and save it here. But I just want to view it in um for now, just view it in the viewport. So yeah, all you have to do now is just select play blast. And I'll go through and start doing a quick little play blast for you at the render settings. And we can see how well our object track has gone. Well, how well our object track is after doing the first blocking, then our in-betweens, then another layer of refinement and this is going to show us where all our sort of pops and slips are and where we need to sort of refine it so it mostly looks pretty good and I'll open up the F check where we just it just caches it for a bit Mm, it's caching. You can see like there's still some like pops and slips in there, but um, turns on how we, we can try and go. We'll go and try and refine it a bit better, but um, it could take quite a while. But let's see how it looks. As long as there's nothing massively obvious. It looks pretty good. And you can select with the F check, you can just click on the window and just slide left and right to see it faster or slower. So this is only this is only cached it, so once you've closed this it'll be gone. Or you can open up the cache file. So, 
it looks pretty good. So, I was saying earlier about a different play blast we can do. So, what we can do, I'm going to go to my prop sword. I'm going to hide my handle, uh, the hilt, and the tip. So it's just this part of the sword. Now I'm going to go to my camera. Because this, in theory, should always be 100% sticking to here. So when you play blast like this, it, it, will revi it usually reveals all the problems. So sometimes you don't want to do this. Sometimes you can don't see the problems. <laughs> but um, this will reveal pretty much everything. So sorry. So I've just gone to my camera, my image plane, changed the alpha gain to 1. I'm just going to change my depth to a thousand. So now, if I turn my wireframe and shading off, I can now see the textured sword. And we can just either stick it on flat shading for now, just so we can see it. And we can already see, just looking at that now, because effectively this is what we're going to do. So we can already see there's some sort of wobbly bits there. And this is how we're going to have to sort of, we're going to have to fix all these sort of wobbles. And you can see why this, like when you play Blast like this, it, will, it, it shows you, unfortunately shows you all the problems. So we will have to do like more refinement, but so let's go for that. So let's just right click and play blast again, and it will play blast at the same uh, settings. Just that we'll now see our geo completely. And even on our wire, this is why we kind of like when we're doing stuff like this, you always want to do a play blast like this because we can really see those pops or slips that easily with the wireframe. But say if they'd sent it off to be rendered, this is what you're going to get back effectively, but a nicer version. And this this reveals all. So once we have a look at this, we'll go through and we'll do really fine refinements to uh, stop it from popping and slipping. You can definitely see it's slipping around now quite a bit. But it's pretty close, it's almost there. And we can also see, like, when we build our sword, we don't have to build it that much bigger. But whatever we can do to cover up as much of the old sword is going to be the best. So, so all the tiny, see all these tiny, all these tiny pops are so obvious now, and it's all floating around. So we have to go, because we actually didn't do too much on the beginning, we kind of left it because it looked alright, but obviously we've missed quite a few. We've missed quite a few um, bumps and pops, but for the areas that we did refine, do a lot of keyframes. It looks pretty good. There are some pump bumps and pops there, see. But where we've refined it quite a lot, it doesn't look too bad. And obviously in these fast bits, it's like who knows? We just got to make it look normal in the, in the fast bits. Maybe there's a slight pop there or something quite irregular. So 
something not quite right there, that's for sure. It looks weird. That frame looks very odd. You can see I'm just like the blade sort of flattens out. I don't know how that's happened. That looks like a completely wrong place. Maybe you can just adjust that in a minute. But everything else is looking pretty good. So this is what I always do when we're doing stuff like this. I always do a play blast like this because now you can see how bad that bit is at the beginning. So what we'll do, we'll go through and we'll do like another load of refinement just from uh, doing these play blasts. So I'm just going to close that down. So if I go show NURBS curve again. Let's just select the NURBS curve. What I can do is you get show deselect selection highlighting so it's not highlighted. Because it's quite a large pop there, so So I am going to work backwards again because I don't want to change something here, then it effectively having to change here. Or we can create a, uh, another edit animation layer on this. I kind of prefer to get as much in the keyframes first. So. So I'm just going to work back, because we actually didn't do that much in this one. We actually did very minimal edits. That's probably why it's not looking so great. So kind of the final stage of all this is literally just to go through and make this look like this is sticking to the hilt. Which it can be very difficult to see. We can see stuff like that. You might just have to go for keyframe and keyframe. Just make it look as normal as possible. I, I was wondering why nothing was happening, so I've, I've actually haven't got auto key on. I was like, why is that not doing anything? So make sure you turn auto key back on, or is it just never fixing it? I was wondering what's going on there.
So I'm just checking every frame that I do, making sure that it's not doing anything strange again. I'm just going to make some keyframes. It's just easier to sort of go through them that way. tricky. So I think the actual angle of that is actually Off, maybe. That's obviously, of course, if you want to actually <laughs> use this section. It's all dependent on how much you actually want to use it this shot. Like, if you don't plan on using it, don't don't object track this part. You don't have to do the whole the whole entire frame. If you only want a little bit of it, just only do a little bit of it. Because it is quite a lot. It is a lot to do. And then um, can be quite time consuming. Sometimes I just can't even see what's really going on, to be honest. Actually, gonna do 
can make this easier for me. I'm just going to bring this all the way down to 150. And then I'm just going to bake all the keys so I can just use my keyframes. So I'm just going to go edit, keys, bake simulation. Oh, need to check, check my channel boxes. Edit, keys, bake. So now I've got keyframes and all of that. So it just makes it easier for me to now, instead of making keyframes, I can just use my, uh, my hotkeys. Very much like you do when you're in sort of 3D and fixing your points. makes it a lot easier to sort of, instead of having to press multiple buttons now, all I have to do is just press my greater than sort of buttons. I can see these sort of slips much easier. And I think we're at a point where we might need to get our graph editor out. Just go to Windows, Animation Editor, Graph Editor. It's be quite difficult to. See, possibly. But we can see all our keys now. It's much easier to edit our positions this way. So, such a small movement here in the Z, so we select that frame, press F. Oh, we're in the rotation, don't do that, make sure in the translate. You can see now we can do really small adjustments. Let's do that. Let's see, we're actually putting the wrong key. Oh, that's more like it. So, what I'd like to do, if you select a key and press F, that'll now zoom in on it and give you much smaller movements. Sometimes even deleting the key might help. Don't be afraid of deleting stuff. Sometimes you just have to. It's a very small movement, which is very the worst ones to sort of get. Ooh.
I think we're pretty close. I'm just going through this curve editor on my translate Y and just sort of try and bring it all. Oop, make sure you don't do that. So, what we can do is change this just up and down so we only move it in one axis. So, we don't accidentally slide keyframes across uh, frames. And we're literally just going to go for every keyframe. We're just going to try and get this as best as we can. Like I say, if you don't want to do this, obviously this is a really important part of being able to do stuff. It's working in the graph editor and figuring out these really small movements. But, um, you could also just not use this part of the plate, but that's entirely up to you. But Sometimes showing just small, small move, small animation movements and object tracking are actually surprisingly difficult to do because fast movements you get lost in the animation and it it doesn't matter so much. You can hide a lot of stuff in fast movements, not so much in slow movements. Sometimes incredibly hard to even see. So you will have to sort of do this then. Play last again. It really depends on how much time you want to spend on it. Actually, not so much the y-axis now. This looks like it's probably in the other axis. But that's... Ooh. Go for into this sort of X translation. Mm. 
It's super difficult to really see. What's that Y? So at this sort of stage it's even it's really difficult to see if you're actually improving it. So let's just minimize that. Let's just do another play blast. So you might want to save it. And what we can do is just do a very quick play blast again. So hopefully we sort of fix some of these problems we had at the start. But um, it's going to be one of those things that could take quite a while to sort of do. And yeah, it's just, it's just going to be one of those things you just got to put loads of time in. We could almost do what would probably solve a lot of the problems is actually pushing the sword extension a bit more and uh, doing it all the way to the hilt. It still looks like it's wobbling a little bit. So this is just going to be one of those things where you're going to have to keep going backwards and forwards. And uh, I hope that works a bit better. So there's only so much you can see and and like I said earlier there's been quite a few questions of whether if this sort of stuff will get replaced by a sort of automated software um, I'd love to see some automated software do something like this um, and be able to go back and do that fine refinement It actually doesn't look too bad. There's still some slipping there. So, it's obviously super obvious with the sort of the grayscale. So let's actually go hardware texturing. Play blast it again. And even just from the hardware texturing, just from texturing, we've kind of got a kind of fairly cool result just from the projected textures, albeit it's not realistic, but I think it looks better than the prop. <laughs> it definitely looks... I don't know. But doing Play Blasters will save you so much time in 
because you don't want to really want to render this and it kind of doesn't look like it's sticking. You want to make sure it's... You want to be 100%. So it's looking pretty close though. Really small wobbles in it in places. Still floating there. See how it kind of drifts across. So we'll still have to fix that. And most of it looks really good though. Definitely could get away with that, probably. No, let's also do let's see what it looks like if we did do the hilt as well. Just to see what it looks like with the different sort of things. Obviously, we're going to see much less wobbling from this. It'll be easier to sort of get away with some wobbles in the tracks if we model that much and rendered that much. It depends on how much refinement we want to do. Obviously, we don't want to be spending weeks and weeks on this. Um, so if we can find areas where we can sort of almost not have to worry too much about tiny little wobbles. It's all about finding sort of areas where you can sort of speed things up. Well, I think it looks, it looks pretty good. It's, it's, it's not by far not like an absolute one-to-one -one perfect sort of track, so... It's uh, it's it's pretty close. It's like 90, 98% there. There's still some that slide right at the beginning. So it's the sort of the, the up and down's gone. It's just that sort of. It looks like it slips off to the right. Sort of slips off there and comes back. And that's gonna be a very and that's actually gonna be quite a difficult thing to fix because it's so subtle. Slight slipping there. Feels a bit weird. It kind of feels like comes up out of the hand, but Yeah, so we'll just carry on with that sort of refinement. It 
it's just trying to find those areas which kind of let's try it with our hardware texturing it off and this will kind of show us everything but hopefully uh you guys have all got this far as well and you're like all like it's one of those things where it's almost like 98 percent finished so there's tiny little things that we need to sort of fix so tiny little small things that are the worst things but i don't think you'd even get this far in 3d it'll just take forever hopefully you should have something cool out of this And obviously, like, you don't have to track this whole sequence. I've just done it because it kind of covers quite a large range of stuff. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if if you want me to go through. Like, it could be it could be like another couple hours of just me refining things. Whether if you want me to do that or not, or I just so if we just do a little bit more refining because. You might not end up watching it. <laughs> so I think it's pretty. Let's try and fix that damn slide at the beginning. That's the one thing that's really annoying. It's hard to tell what's actually really happening. There it is. And literally the tiniest movements that hopefully so imagine having to do this on every single keyframe it would take absolutely ages when you're doing stuff like this you can't really even tell if you're really fixing it all you can do is just go over that area again and just try and make it better because sometimes when it's such a small movement you you just can't see it
But yeah, this is usually what goes into object tracking. Anyway, you, you just won't you just won't see ping pong balls. That's just a uh, it just never happens. So even though this can be quite painful sometimes, this is kind of what's gonna what you're gonna get when you work in a company doing VFX. And if you're doing an object track, this is probably even luxury because you might not even have a model that fits. So you might have to do some sort of things where it's like you're remodeling and animating at the same time, which can be quite tricky. I don't know if I fixed it or made it worse. And sometimes it can just be an illusion. <laughs> you can just be seeing things. That's why it's always good to get stuff checked by other people. Let's go through and try and fix some of the other problems. They're so hard to tell. Definitely slipping there. So this could actually take quite quite a long time to do. Because so I've got to keep going through and adjusting it and play blasting it and adjusting it and play blasting it. Because sometimes you just you just can't see. Feeling pretty confident that we're going to get this this time. This is why we kind of really rely on the in betweens. And this could have been, this might just be because I had a bad lineup. Imagine if you had bad lineups on all your frames.
we can lose it on the hide the sandals. See, actually, double check that we're not doing anything like double check we're not doing anything crazy or anything. Seems fine, but so she hide the hilt now. Gonna go around and just look at this in closer detail. See what the whole thing looks like with just obviously we're not gonna do this otherwise because we're not gonna replace the handle because otherwise then you'd have to rotate out the hand and all that sort of stuff and do more work. It's totally up to you. But um what I'll probably do, I will, I will probably just continue refining this until it's as close as I can get it within reason. But we'll see how this looks now. Hopefully, plate loss is looking pretty good. Obviously, when you play blast like this, you can't really see what's really happening. It's just kind of. Nice to see the whole sword sort of in there. So we'll probably finish up soon on this. Like I say, because this is just, at, at this point now, it's just, we just got to go through, do adjustments, uh, play blast, then adjust the sort of bits that are slipping and breaking and just doing that over and over and over until we've got it pretty much perfect. So that's looking pretty cool. But obviously, what we want to see is something more like this. So let's see this again. Hopefully we fix that sort of dodgy bit down there. I think it's going to be pretty dark as well. I know we don't want to be, we want to get as best as possible. but I don't want to be spending months and months and months on it. But it'll be great for your show rules if you do get it absolutely perfect. Like we're pretty close now, so... I just feel if I uh, continue doing this, it could be another... It could be five hours of me doing this. <laughs> it's looking pretty good now, anyway. Hopefully that's probably it. Because I don't feel we're going to replace this. So once we've done this, we've tracked it, we can then like start working on our sword concept. And maybe even if we do a bigger hill, it will probably cover a lot of things. So it's looking pretty good at the start now. 
quite happy with that. If we look at that, it's not where it was before. It was kind of slipping side to side. It kind of looks weird, but... It's hard to tell. Kind of looks like it's slipping still. So that's actually do he. We just use our 2D pan and zoom in on that part. And if you just press escape, it will quit out and just show those frames. So it could just be where my thumb, the, the thumb's moving. It's hard to tell. So it's definitely still slipping. It's looking very weird. Kind of looks like it's slipping down. So what I'm going to do... I'm just going to... Go back to those frames. I feel it's looking pretty good though. It's just this section here. It's, 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 the, small movements that are, it's the small movements that are really difficult to do. And it's... It can get very frustrating sometimes. So what I'm actually going to do... I'm just going to hold shift and drag all the way back. And I'm going to delete. So don't be afraid of deleting stuff. Sometimes you just have to do it. What we'll do, we'll go back to our geo. Let's, let's just go back to our um, image plane. Change this back to one and change it alpha gain. Cool, let's change our default materials, it's a little bit easier to see. And let's just try and do this again because we seem to be going backwards and forwards, and sometimes it's just easier to start again so Let's push this back because I feel like we could this is an easy enough move that we should be able to get this in the tweens. We should be able to get it really nice. Because even the complicated positions have seemed to have worked really well. Which just proves that the model works really well. Like I said, it could all be down to a bad lineup that we may have done.
I just hope we don't end up going around in circles again. <laughs> but you've got to try it. So we're just going to go through pretty much just try and track it as best as possible again. And we'll do this one more time. If we don't get any better, we can just, I'll have to finish it off in my own time well finish it off outside of a tutorial because I'm not sure watching me do it is going to help you that much because I'm just doing the same thing over and over Actually, be our problem is, is if we hide it, we we'll sort of see the end of our sword, and it actually looks way out of position. So actually, I'm gonna, unfortunately. Oh, not delete the whole sword. I think our problem is that we've just got, we've had a bad Bad lineup point. Just gonna delete it. Delete those frames. But it's, it's not letting me delete those frames. Why is it not letting me delete them? It's because I'm pressing delete, not right click and delete. My bad. So. I think our problem was coming from that. That was a bad lineup, so. Just about see the end of the sword. So all we have at the moment is the sword handle and end. So we kind of have to work with that. Yeah, this this is so seem can be quite difficult to do, but you just gotta stick with it. And you've also got to be pretty um tough on yourself as well, because I could probably just 
finished this a while back, but I think as when you're doing stuff and like you want to strive for like perfection, which is very can be quite difficult to obtain, but it's very satisfying when you eventually get it. But it's also extremely time consuming. Sometimes, like like there, I kind of accepted with these frames that I wasn't getting any better from it, so it was just time to delete them, start again, and that's going to happen. You'll get that with a lot of things, uh, rotomation and stuff like that, doing body tracks, and object tracks. This is still a this is still better to do it this way than try and do it if 3D. I find. Because some things you can't really track. It kind of throws things in the wrong depth sometimes. And can cause more problems than you would like. I've probably not sold this though, because I've spent quite a long time doing this, but. Hopefully, this should give you a really good idea of what actual object tracking in VFX is really like. You're just not going to get golf balls in eight years. I've never seen golf balls or oh, ping pong balls, sorry. It kind of just teaches you the wrong things. So hopefully I'm just going to go through and do all my in-betweens. This is... I'm saying the smallest movements are the worst. Because it's so hard to even gauge. With fast big movements you can tell what's going on. Not so much with small movements. And you'll just develop a good eye for it as well. Over time you'll be able to blast through these really easy. And if you're a perfectionist, this will probably be a nightmare for you because you'll just want to get it perfect. This is the problem that I sometimes have. I do feel quite a bit of a perfectionist, which is a bit of a curse sometimes. So I just want it to be perfect. Even though sometimes you, you can't really get it absolutely perfect. But you can get it really close. Close enough that no one will ever notice. So let's hide the handle again. Tip. And change our camera. Sorry, I keep drifting away from the mic. And change our depth to a thousand. Let's turn our wireframe or shaded off. And we know it's going to be wobbly, so we don't really need to play blast this right now. What we can do, we can just quickly do some quick edits.
go for keyframe by keyframe again. Usually when you're at a company, you'll have some pretty good tools to sort of help with this. I don't have any of those tools at home, fortunately, so I can't really show you any of them. But it's a rotation weird going on there. I think it's the rotation that's kind of making it look funny. Let's unkey that. Let's break selection on that because it's really annoying. <laughs> so we've got a rotation happening here. But no rotation actually happening in the actual sword. So it could be that that's making it look very odd. Which I got a feeling it is. So let's remove that rotation out. that rotation in there. So I seem to be seeing a rotation in there with the wireframe. I don't know why. It seems why. That might be why. It was looking funky. It's 
let's just put keyframe on all these frames so I don't have to keep keying them. I'm just going to work my way back. Yeah, just going through and doing extremely tiny movements. Finally, getting this first bit, the simplest of the bit that I thought would be the simplest part, is actually turning out to be the worst part. You probably sat and watched me mess around with this for quite a while now, so hopefully we should be done on this one. Like there, we will get it.
I think that's probably going to be pretty close. Obviously, if I probably might spend some extra time on this without you just watching me for, I think I've done almost an hour of refinement and just doing stuff like that. I'm not sure how much you can. I can just record of that because obviously it's just going to be loads of just me just going between keyframes. But um, the general sort of all the theory and the, the methods and the sort of it's all the same throughout. And just um, you just want to apply that to all the parts where it's sort of slipping. And like I do every time, I'm just going to go through, adjust it, play blast. Like I say, when you play blast like this, this reveals everything. Like this is the best way to see the sort of um, like object tracks if you can, because yeah, you'll just be able to see everything. And what I'll do, I'll probably I'll probably finish up now, and what we can do is I'll probably maybe refine it. Then we'll work on our sort of concepting our sword. Then we can see what it looks like on our basic concept sword because. We might not even see any of the wobbles on our swords. But that's looking pretty good. Still wobbling at the beginning, I think. Let's have a look at the, the graph editor. Let's have a look at this section. Let's see what happens if we just smooth this out. And any big bumps, lumps. Let's try that because we could be adding more in there that we shouldn't really be adding in. We haven't really got any big bumps here. There seem to be some wobbles somewhere. Let's see if that's made that worse or better. So I'm not going to play the whole thing, I'm just going to escape. And uh should just play the first bit. If we're lucky, that might have just absolutely fixed it, but... No, still wobbling. Let's actually zoom in and have a look. Let's try and get this. I don't want to give up. around 10.23 so I think if we work from 10.30 backwards 
It's this whole beginning part which is turning into an absolute pain. It's so hard to see. So I'll just change my phone so instead of play blasting I can just look at it, I can just play through. You might not have you might not be able to do that, but So I'm actually going to hide and probably go see if I can actually. Let's go to. Shouldn't be having this. Good way to sort of see if it's jittering around.
see what this is doing in perspective. It's got all windows. I don't think that's happening. Let's just delete a lot of these rotations because I think the rotations are causing us some problems. Because this is where a lot of jitter will come from if we have a lot of animal on the rotations. So we could just reduce that quite a lot. So we could end up completely breaking it and having to do this all again. But like I say, we want to try and get that jitter out. So let's just check we've not got any odd stuff going on in our Z depth. Let's delete all that, make it basic. Because we could just be adding too many keys. Ooh. Let's just reduce the amount of possible errors so okay I'm deleting stuff again it's weird so we could still be ending up breaking this even more so I've got translate X is really good. It's definitely something strange here. If you don't delete too much because it's just going backwards and forwards all the time. But sometimes that's just how it is. So let's have a look at that now and look at the damage. These first 50 frames are really annoying. wasn't expecting this to be the difficult part of the tutorial, but you might not have had the same problems as I had, so See how I'm using. I've gone through different methods of how I'm tracking this off. 
started off my wireframe. Now I'm mostly just trying to get this to look right with the grayscale. This will do it. Probably is a little bit more advanced, I guess, this sort of tutorial, but hopefully it's not. I've not put you guys off doing it this way because in reality this is probably how you're gonna have to do it. It's just it can be quite tricky. And I can't, I can't ever see automated software being able to do this. And I keep saying that, but it seems to be a hot topic right now. Everyone seems to be talking about it. I've had quite a few questions on the channel about replace the life expectancy of match move artists, and until they can get software that can do stuff like this I think we're pretty much so you're all pretty much safe so So it's probably going to be my last pass on this for the tutorial, but you guys are still getting the same thing. It's just this over and over. And I don't know how much you want to watch me doing this. Because they are quite. It's the small movements that make it very difficult. So I'm just going to go for it a keyframe at a time. So it looks like that's all. You also might need to get someone else to look at it because sometimes you just start seeing things. <laughs> That sounds crazy, but
probably it's quite hard to continually talk over doing the same thing as well so I'm probably sorry for being quite quiet I'm trying to concentrate as much as possible So I think that looks much better. We spent so much time on that first beginning bit, haven't even managed to get around to doing any of the other bits. Let's just play blast that and have a look. Let's see what it looks like with... Uh... Hopefully it should look alright. It's looking much better at the start now anyway. So, although I've spent probably an hour on that start bit. Sorry about that. But, um, it's looking way better, I think. Yeah, this is looking so much better, even though it's quite slow. I think we might have finally cracked it after a very long time. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. But, um, yeah. It's always the small movements that seem to be quite tricky. So the beginning of it looks good, finally. Oh, there's certain other areas that need to be fixed.
Cool. So I would just carry on and refine any bits that you're kind of that if your play blasts are showing lumps and bumps in your sort of track, I would just go through and do what I've been doing and play blast, select that area and sort of fix it a little bit and just adjust the keys. And um, I think I'm pretty much done with this. I think this is probably good enough for what I need. I might refine it a little bit more. There's, there are some tiny little bumps, but um, I'll do that outside of the tutorial because it's just the same thing over and over. You probably just don't want me to go through and do that and you're probably more than capable of doing it for yourselves. Um, so yeah, I think we've done... This has been a very, very long tutorial, this one, but um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed it and good insights to manual object tracking in uh, Maya. So um, yeah, if you enjoyed this tutorial, or lasted this long to the end, uh, hit that like button and subscribe for more like this.